Time for the box of books again. Also, hi, kitten, in case she's in the shot. Oh, she's most definitely in the shot. Well, she doesn't have any fingerprints. <laughs> All right. Donald Duck, instant millionaire. Oh, I wonder if Scrooge is going to be involved in this one. I would think he would have to be. But this should be very different from the uh, Goldilocks one. Hmm. Sorry, I took the book out of the shot to look at it. That's okay. <laughs> but it's not going to be anything like the Goldilocks one, I don't think. Hopefully none of that strange pizza. <laughs> Oosh. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. If I approve the video, you already know that we're talking about another little golden book. Walt Disney's Donald Duck Instant Millionaire. Though you might have also gotten that from the title or the thumbnail. Many ways you could have figured it out. But I'm hoping the video got approved because they're fun to do. Thanks again, Sasami-chan. Hmm. Well, that is an interesting inside cover. Yes. Donald Duck in a chaise lounge with a radio next to him and a robotic butler with a drink that has two straws while and, he's reading a book. In the a uh, robotic butler has roller skates. Also, as per most Disney books, no real credit. This particular volume, Physically in My Hands, is the second printing from 1979. Hmm. Copyright is 1978. And 102-4 for the number in Golden Book's numbering system. Hmm. Oh, that's a good start. Hello, Scrooge. Yes, with the driver other than Launchpad, who I am temporarily blanking on the name of. Yes, we need to go back and watch more DuckTales. <laughs> Donald Duck and his nephews waved goodbye politely as Uncle Scrooge drove away. But once he was out of sight, they leaped and laughed and frisked and frolicked and chuckled and cheered. Frisk? Yes. Frisk? Yes. Apparently I have a different definition of that word. There, there's more than one. You're thinking of the one from uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I was just thinking of someone searching someone else. Yeah, like I said, you're thinking of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. And also, once again, like the last book we read with Donald and the boys, we have the shirt colors of green, red, and yellow rather than blue. Hmm. Yippee! shouted Huey. We won't have to wash any dishes while we're minding Uncle Scrooge's super automated house. He has a machine to wash the dishes. He has one to mow the lawn, too, said Louie. He has machines to do everything, cried Dewey. I sense a problem. Yeah. Even nowadays, there's issues with smart homes. People are vicious. Are you talking about the hacks or people not being able to turn on and off their lights? Ah, uh, I'm talking about abusive significant others who cr lock their partners in and crank up the heat. Oh, bugger, I've never heard of that. That's evil of them. Donald grinned. And, yeah, heads up, I'm not doing any voices. I'm going to like being a millionaire for a day, he said. I just have to make sure no one comes in and no one touches the master control panel that runs the house. Ah! There it is. That'll be a snap, gloated Huey, and he ran off to swim in Uncle Scrooge's ruby and emerald pool. No work at all, added Dewey, and he ran off to bowl in Uncle Scrooge's private bowling alley. Nothing to worry about, said Louie, and he ran off to watch Uncle Scrooge's 68-inch television set. That's still pretty big for now. But not nearly as far-fetched as it used to be. Yeah. You can actually walk into a Best Buy and buy that. Yeah, I think you can buy a hundred and something inch right now. Mm-hmm. Of course, then there's projection screens, which can get really large. Mm-hmm. Like Frank's 10,000-inch TV. Mm-hmm. They're emphasizing nothing can go wrong a little too much. Just a smidge. As for Donald, he wandered out to the front lawn and watched the automatic lawnmower run back and forth on the smooth, velvety grass. Uh... One, the grass wouldn't be that high at a millionaire's house, and two, it would not have these variant uh, weeds and wildflowers in it. Mm. This is really living, Donald decided. 
At home, I have to push the lawnmower myself. Now I have to wonder if it's an actual push mower or if it's a gas mower. Ah. <laughs> the one Donald's referring to. Hmm. I'm already seeing um, some print errors on the next page. Yeah, a little off there. Just then, as the mower finished its work and shut itself up in the garage, the front door swung open and Huey, Dewey, and Louie came straggling out. They looked woebegone and wretched. Huey's tail feathers were crumpled and Dewey had a bump on his foot. He was the one who was playing bowling, right? I believe so, but in the color morph, I would have expected yellow to be Dewey because that's the color that's off from the modern ones. But Dewey has a bump on his foot. Dewey, it, they're calling Dewey by Huey's color. Okay, I, I think they just... Randomly, and Huey's tail feathers were crumpled, and the one with crumpled tail feathers is in Louie's colors. I, I think they got the colors mixed up here. Uncle Scrooge's automatic pool cleaner chased me out of the pool, complained Huey, and look what it did to my tail feathers. Uncle Scrooge's solid gold bowling balls are too heavy, moaned Dewey. I dropped one on my foot. Uncle Scrooge's TV has a time guard timer, Louie reported. It won't turn on until six o'clock. <laughs> Parental controls, check. Wow, all the way back then? At least they don't have to worry about DRM. Yep. Suddenly there was a click and a swoosh and a pitter-patter of very wet drops. Fully, shouted Donald. It's the automatic lawn sprinkler. Donald and the boys raced for the house. Uh, yeah, usually when you hear the click, it's time to move when you're on grass. Or if you see a little black thing suddenly raising up, run. Quite. Though I... it's a little harder for the motion sensor ones. Hmm. I've been caught in automatic sprinklers coming on. Not automatic sprinklers coming on, but I've been hit by one of the deer deterrent ones that's motion sensitive. Oof. Ouch. It's not that hard, but it does startle. Yeah. I bet. When they came dripping and splashing into the front hall, a panel in the wall popped open. Out came a little machine that waved a tiny mop. It made angry tick-tick-ticking sounds and chased the ducks up the stairs. Then it busily mopped the water off the floor. Oh, I see they're going for, instead of the house model functioning, they're not used to living in a house like this. And there's too much convenience. Mm-hmm. That gadget's mad at us, shouted Huey. It swatted me in the ankle, complained Louie. Nonsense, said Donald. It's only a machine. Wonder if we can even have a snack in this house without getting into trouble, grumbled Dewey. As it turned out, Donald and the boys couldn't even have a snack without getting into trouble. They couldn't even have a snack at all. There was no refrigerator in the kitchen. There was only an electronic food server, which was set to serve dinner at seven and not a moment before. That looks like a ham. I remember pig-like characters in this universe. That's a little awkward. Yeah, and wow, Scrooge has a really set routine. Well, routines are good in most instances because the fewer decisions you have to make in a day, the better. Hmm. It's part of why Steve Jobs wore the same clothing every day. It wasn't just branding. It was one less decision to make. Hmm. Donald and the boys waited and waited. At last, the food server rang its bell and the robot butler buzzed into the dining room with a tray. Baked ham, cried Dewey. And corn on the cob, exclaimed Huey. Let's take our time and enjoy it, said Donald. Remember, no snacks tonight. Everyone want to bet that they take too long to eat dinner and the plates get taken away? Yep. Huey, Dewey, and Louie did take their time. In fact, they took too much time. Before they had finished, the robot butler buzzed in and picked up their plates. Then it buzzed back to the kitchen and clattered the plates into the instant sudser which gurgled and churgled and washed them clean. Hmm. <laughs> Art's nice. What's really interesting is, like, the butler has a permanent mmm, yes face. Mm-hmm. Also very human in appearance. And actually human, not DuckTales universe humanoid. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Hmm. But I'm still hungry, wailed Louie. Listen, said Dewey. Out near the front gate, bells were ringing. Jingly, jangly, frosty, yummy bells. Huh? 
Yes, it says yummy and it's even italicized. It's the ice cream man, cried Huey. Donald completely forgot that he wasn't supposed to let anyone in. He ran and pushed the button to open the electric gate. Then he and the boys dashed eagerly out onto the porch. Did they see an ice cream truck rolling up the drive? No, indeed. What they saw were three horrible beagle boys who trotted in, chuckling evil chuckles. Uh, trying to remember how to do evil chuckles. Can't remember right now. <laughs> that was a good one, but that's more evil than I think they could muster. Look, this only goes to 11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, cried Huey. They'll take the rubies out of Uncle Scrooge's swimming pool. Not the emeralds. Yeah. They'll steal the gold bowling balls out of Uncle Scrooge's bowling alley, moaned Louie. Donald leaped to the master control panel. He turned knobs. He twirled tuners. He twisted dials. And he clicked switches. I just have another problem with gold bowling balls. Too soft. Yeah. There's a reason they're made out of vinyl, I believe it is. Couldn't say. All around Donald and his nephews, Uncle Scrooge's automated house began to buzz and hum and clank and rumble and tick. The little mopping machine popped out of the wall and chased a beagle into the dining room. There, the robot butler picked the beagle up and carried him to the kitchen. It plopped him into the automatic sensor, which gurgled and churgled and covered the beagle with suds. It was a frightful experience for the poor beagle, who hadn't had a bath in over 20 years. Oh, 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 boy. Pretty sure they forced you to take baths in prison. Yeah. Or at least hit you with a hose. That would be a shower, not a bath. No. Nah. Said he hadn't had a bath in over 20 years. No. Nah. A second beagle was trying to steal the rubies and emeralds from Uncle Scrooge's swimming pool. See, he remembered the emeralds, but the kids didn't. Mm. But the automatic pool cleaner came scrubbing along and chased him out. Then the built-in super vacuum whooshed him into an opening in the wall. He stuck fast there, along with Uncle Scrooge's second best umbrella and an old hat rack. Hmm. That is kind of awkward. He's supposed to be, I believe, stuck on the wall there, but... Eh. The third beagle had got too close to the automatic pen setter in Uncle Scrooge's bowling alley, and it was picking him up and setting him down, and picking him up and setting him down, and picking him up and setting him down. Wow, it actually repeats it that many times? Yes. Wow, for kids? Fortunately, Uncle Scrooge came home early, and he rescued the dust-free beagle from the vacuum, released the terribly clean beagle from the sudser, and freed the frightfully rattled beagle from the pen setter. I'm proud of my marvelous house, cried Uncle Scrooge, when the beagles had been taken away and the automated house had been turned off. Those villains won't try to get in here again. I don't think we will either, said Donald. He and the boys climbed down off a bookshelf, where they had been keeping out of the way of the mopping machine, and they hurried home to their own simple little house. Buses of water, washing dishes in the background, a picture of Scrooge on the wall. Yep, a chair, and they're in their bedclothes, and Donald's in an apron. First, they had a nice snack from the refrigerator. After that, they watched television for a while. Then they went to bed and slept soundly all through the night. And who wouldn't? Living in an automated house may be fine for Uncle Scrooge, but for just plain folks, it's just plain hard work. <laughs> uh, kind of makes you want to go off and have a snack yourself. Well, we, we do have snackish stuff, because I, I know how to make food. Also, the, I love how the gold bowling balls are the star on the cover. And, you know, when it says instant millionaire i was thinking like somehow they found these giant balls of gold somewhere and were actually temporarily millionaires yeah especially with that inner cover too like donald bought that robot i thought yeah it looked very much like he was actually enjoying everything though if you look here at the way the duck in yellow's hands are splayed and also donald you can actually see that they're bowling balls. And you can see the pin setter and the railing. That doesn't exactly look like the pin setters at the alleys I go to. No, me either. And that doesn't look like the rack either. Yes, apparently something as straightforward as rolling a ball down a lane and knocking over some pins can change a lot over the decades. Yeah, well, 
we're always trying to improve stuff. Though that reminds me of Wii Bowling and how there's a um, trick in, I think it's one of the special bowling ones where you have to knock down a lot of pins. And if you go all the way over to the railing and you get your ball to land on top of the railing and it rides it all the way down, you'll hear it, boom, and all the pins will fall down. <laughs> so this is a fun little story, though I think I like the uh, reverse fairy tale one a little better. Yeah, it was, that was fun. This one just kind of poked fun at automated houses and how s simple folk couldn't handle it. Yeah, which... Uh, feels a little off just because something is above your financial level doesn't mean you couldn't deal with it if you got it and if they would have set it up themselves it probably wouldn't have bugged them no they would have known everything but they were coming into it blind and it's different than what they're used to and different things and new things can be hard to learn and adapt to but the lesson here that you shouldn't learn you should just be happy with the simple things you have okay the be happy with what you have part is good but can at least be allowed to aspire for better as long as you don't look at what you have and go this is garbage i deserve better go this is what i have this is what i would like this is the gap what do i need to do to close that gap and is it reasonable all right, so another little golden book. This has been Walt Disney's Donald Duck, Instant Millionaire. And I really like the cover for the simple fact that I can just take the yellow here and extend it out. Yes, not super complicated to insert my avatar into. That's about inserting it more like repairing the cover and making it so I can do things with it. I also think it's interesting we have this much of a yellow background when the focus in the foreground is on gold, which mm. is similar to yellow. But I think it also has to do with the limited print palette, you know, because sometimes they're only allocated so many colors. Think how 8-bit game design used to go with the limited color palette. Similar concept, but in print form. And since that was a slight interruption at the end, because I was about to say thanks again to Sasami-chan because I'd finished the title. There's no author or illustrator to credit because Disney doesn't want you to think about individuals. They are Disney. So, yeah, Golden Books. I don't think these actually go out of print. Um, if they do, we'll have a link for an out-of-print version. I think the one and only book that was ever picked up from our Amazon link was used. I think it sold for a dollar. It was awesome. For anyone who's wondering, it was the little pussy cat, i.e. Pussy Willow. You have an awesome memory. <laughs> I would have either gone to look at the stat page. <laughs> and, of course, Ebates, because I can. I don't think anyone cares, but I can, therefore I do. Also, we, we mentioned food and that I know how to make it. I do have a couple recipes up over on Ember's Emporium of Everything. Only one at this point that's an old family recipe, but nothing that I've taken and posted is without my personal tweaks. So you can check that out too. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.